Yes, let us proceed with the reaction to French invasion in West Africa. So after discussing the East African reactions or resistances against the German rule, we now proceed with reaction to French invasion in West Africa. That is to say, we, we, are, we are going to discuss those reactions based in West Africa after being discussing the East African reactions. So, reaction to French invasion, that is Senegambia, French military conquest in West Africa, were first directed against Senegambia during the role of Mohamedou Lamine and against Guinea, then under Samoa Touré. The major aim of the French was to capture the trading centers of Western Sudan and the strategic areas between Upper Senegal and Niger. They had already built warehouses and fortresses along these rivers to control trade in palm oil, groundnuts, and gold from the interior. However, the power, power base of African ruling classes lay in the control of this trade. This was one of the factors of the conflict between the French imperialist forces and the Africans. And the French employed a number of techniques to conquer the territory. One of these was to utilize existing local differences or to initiate new conflicts between African ruling groups. To be able to conquer Senegambia, the French formed alliances with the empires of Tukilo under Sheikh Ahmad, Bandu Empire under Amun Penda and Host Castle under Luku Sambala. In so doing, the French managed to conquer and subjugate the weaker states. Again, we have the reaction of French uh, invasion of Guinea. And here, in the reaction of French invasion in Guinea, we meet with Samuel Toll of Guinea, who illustrated for many people the courage and determination of African resistance to European conquest. Samuel Toll was successful for six years in preventing his own state from being colonized by the French. Although he was ultimately defeated, the duration of his resistance was itself a victory, which can only be understood by looking back to the earlier period of his life. And this person, Samuel Tull, was born into a Malinke family, the first child of a farmer who was strongly family connections with the Jula, the trading community of the Malinke people. The Jula lived in the great commercial centers on the northern edge of the West African forest belt. So at the age of 18, he asked to be released from his duties on the farm and be allowed to join the jeweler. For about five years, he built up strong business and made many contacts throughout the Western Sudan. This life was interrupted in 1852 when his, his mother was made captive by Son Birama, the king of Bisandam. Samori offered his services as a soldier to Son Birama in return for his mother's freedom and this is where his life of being a soldier started.
And then after Samori's power and leadership attracted many followers and within a few years he found that he was strong enough to be independent of Son Birama. He set out to control the whole of Malike land and thus to maintain peace, law and order. He was joined by many minor leaders and supported by his family. By 1879, his territory had stretched from Sierra Leone to the Ivory Coast in the west, from Bamako in the north to the Liberian borders in the south. His authority was based more on his military power than on his religious leadership. His army was composed of young captures, soldiers trained mostly as foot soldiers, the infantry. His army could have a total of 10 or 12,000 full equipped. That is to say, his army was much equipped. So, some more determined to defend commercial centers and trade routes always sought to acquire and maintain regular supplies of firearms ammunition and horses for his army he was helped by the jewel mercants in his and dev the mercants obtained the firearms through trade with European makers. Samuel father maintained a group of skilled craftsmen who repaired and even made guns. In this year, 1884, French forces of occupation started advancing towards Bamako. They demanded that Samuel should keep away from the large Sambara and the Mandingo markets. Samuel rejected the demand and managed to keep the French off up to 1890. From 1891 to 1898, Samor conducted guerrilla warfare. He organized an excellent system of military intelligence to spy on enemy troop movements. Some, why Samor told fault against the French? So in, uh, from 1891 to 1898 was where Samor started to fight against the French after being using uh, force. Those French started to force or to use force against Samor. So let us check uh, that factors for the Samor town resistances against the French rule. The French activities of selling army to Samori's enemies, such as Tieba of Scasso, uh, uh, MD Samor Tori. The French MD at weakening the Mandika so as to acquire it smoothly. Also, Samor Tol was shocked by the failure of his plan of playing off the British against the French. He had signed an agreement with the British on non-interference in each other's sphere of influence. Unfortunately, the British refused to support Samor against the French. So this made him to, uh, to go directly for resistance. Samor Tol wanted to protect the independence of his empire. The use of force by the French in acquiring colonies could not be tolerated by Samor Touré. So he just wanted to make or to protect the lost independence of his empire. Again, French wanted to conquer Mandika when Samor's empire had reached at its peak with military supplements and economic prosperity. The French therefore threatened Samor's territorial expansion into areas which they claimed belonged to them. This also made that resistance. Samor wanted to safeguard trade. He was determined to 
defend commercial centers and the trade routes and maintain regular suppliers of firearms. So because of this also made some other resistances. But we can see that he managed at least eight to nine years to fight against the French because of the numbers of reasons or factors. So let us check reasons as to why Samuel Tour managed to contain or fight the French forces for so long time. So why did he uh, maintain to fight for long time? So there are a number of factors. Factor one was strong army. Samuel Tour had established a strong army of approximately uh, 12,000 men and about 90,000 reserves. He had a standly armed, trained military men who could be taken in emergency cases to help the permanent army. So, because of having a strong army, made him to survive or to maintain fighting against the French over a long time of period. Modern weapons. Samuel Tour had access to modern armies that he had acquired from the coastal traders that he had been friend with them. So Samuel Tour had established a friendship with the coastal traders for quite some time. I also had a military workshop which supplied him with the weapons and repaired his defected weapons. So that's to say Samuel Tour used the modern weapons or good weapons which he acquired from the uh, coastal traders. So this made him to, uh, to maintain the war for a long time. Samuel Tour had a lot of wealth from trade in his slaves, gold and colonels which was utilized in rewarding his workers and the soldiers for their services. So he maintained because of being a wealthier person. He had a wealth which he collected from the slave trade and the other activities. But some of the small soldiers had saved in the French army where they had acquired modern military techniques and so were able to respond effectively to the invaders. These soldiers passed those skills to the rest of the army. That is to say, they had a good military technique. And these techniques were acquired from the French army, since at the previous, they saved in the French army. So this made them to respond effectively to their enemies. Also, he was determined to maintain and preserve his independence in his eyes of Europeans and events. This motivated him to resist for a long time. He wished to be free, to live free from the French. And this made him to be successful. Also, Samora Tour. Samuel Tour established the state control of agriculture and the markets to ensure regular food supply for the army. Availability of food to the soldiers encouraged them to fight for a long time. Since they ate, they had a constant food supply, so this motivated them to fight as much as possible. The use of guerrilla or commando tactics of surprise, ambushes, and the right rates. This helped Samuel to occasionally to win the war. The French soldiers found the Mandika people too difficult to control. So this also made them to survive for a long time in fighting. He used the snort the health military techniques such as burning villages and destroying crops in order to make the French stave when they reach the, the area. That is to say, he used the different techniques so that to burn or to, to make, to let down the French military. The Samoto 
got support from the Mandika people in a national war of defense. This support helped the Samoto to resist for a long time, that is to say, support from the neighboring societies, especially Mandika, as we saw here. So, why Samoto was felt defeat, finally defeat, or defeated? So, he was defeated because of the numbers of factors as follows. Factor one, Anglo-French conspiracy between 1889 to 1890. Samoa had reached an agreement with the British to supply arms to Samoa's armies up to 1896. But in 1896, British breached the treat by occupying Sierra Leone, thus blocked Samoa's access to the army supplies. In the same year, British forces occupied the Gold Coast, making it impossible for Samoa to form a military alliance with the Ashanti. So this made him to prove failure. That's why he decided to surrender. Shortage of military weapons. Surrounded by enemies, Samoa dubbed efforts to manufacture armies within his empire. However, these were not sufficient for the over increasing war demands. In 1889, the French managed to defeat Samoa's forces. So Samoa was captured and exiled to Gabon, where he died two years later. So this also made him to prove to prove failure. Disunity. Disunity among rulers. The res resistors were unable to unite together as they, their enemy, their enemy was they, they, they had the common enemy. Some, some all sought alliance with Almed Sek of Tukol and Taiba of Sikaso with no success. In fact, these rulers even assisted the French in defeating Samoa. Also, a splendid and well-organized army helped to defeat Africans. The colonial armies were better trained and more experienced in strategies and tactics. Hence, the armies led by Samoa did not stand a chance. Thus, the Africans were taught a lesson that those modern societies with institutionalized war and professionalism in modern fighting techniques could never be defeated by Africans. So this also contributed much to the failure of Usamor to resistances. Again, uh, Europeans wanted to preserve their new acquired economic positions and that made them fight to all costs ruthlessly and untiringly. So they just want to preserve their new acquired economic positions. Instability and the public misery were also a major factor in defeat. The wars of resistance of Samoa were fought with bitterness which culminated into greater devastation. Villagers were set on fire. Farmlands destroyed, animals rotted. This end up with the loss of property. Here and a famine and a stirred up local resistances. So that is why famine and the hunger also made them to prove failure. Again, lack lack of support. Lack of support from communities or from near communities. The non Mandika communities and the non Muslims in the empire did not give him full support because they had been mistreated during his leadership. So some decided to support the French forces against him. That is to say, before the coming of French, Samoa Tour mistreated the neighboring societies. So Nani Mandika communities and Nani Muslims in the empire did not give him full support. And we see that some of them gave support to French so that Samoa could be defeated. And unfortunately he was defeated. He was defeated uh, because of what he 
or how did he live? How did he mistreated them uh, previously? But generally, Samaritan was amongst the of active leader of Africa, particularly of West Africa. And because of his strengths, because of his strengths, because of his experiences, because of his wealth, this made him to survive for a long time, uh, to fight against the, against the French. And even the French witnessed the difficulties, witnessed the much difficulties to fight against the, against the Samoa. That is to say, even themselves, they got the lesson that they met with the, a person, uh, with a leader who was active, an active leader, confident leader. But out of those factors uh, which we have discussed, there are, there are significances of Samoa to resistances that it, it gave lessons for the other generation, uh, future generations that once they see something is not good or is not okay, is not going as they wish, they have to fight. Regardless how weapons they have, how much have they prepared, so they have to fight. Again, uh, the resistance itself, it united different societies. As you can see, Samoa society united uh, with the Mandika, so that they could fight against the French. And they, 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 they succeeded, they succeeded more than eight to nine years to fight against the French. It was not an easy task. But it made the French to get a lesson that they have to reduce some conditions which were, were planted in West Africa, such as those heavy taxes, they had to reduce those taxes, they had to, to reduce those harsh treatment uh, and other unfair and fair treatment which were done against it, against it, those people. Again, this was the base. It was the base for the independence. That is to say, they got independence uh, from those elements of some altered resistances. So, uh, this was amongst of those strongly and active resistances which performed by Africans during that time. And it is not only that it was an active and a strong resistances, but it was amongst of large scale resistances since it took place for a large area. A large area support from other that is neighboring societies this made them to have a full participation and to, to, to survive for a long period of time and even other communities of Africa got a lesson that nothing is impossible impossible is possible why our friend or why our, why our fellow has succeeded to, to fight over a long period of time so even ourselves we can we can together we can so once we decide wherever we decide then we can why some other tour has succeeded so even other communities other african leaders uh, started to reunite reunite and participate full in the war and this can be evidenced in Zimbabwe in Zimbabwe whereby Mashona and Matebere or Ndebere were united were united and to form this war this was called the Chimurenga war or Chimurenga resistances that uprised in Zimbabwe from 1896 to 1897. That's to say, they got a lesson from their fellows. What their fellows did, 
So even themselves, they now got the confidence that, oh, we can. We can, no matter the cost, no matter the situation, no matter the effects which will come, but let us fight for our freedom. It is better. It is better to, to, to die free than to live as a slave. So those were some of their ambitions which were used, some of their ideas, ideology, which they had. And they, they helped them as much as, 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 much as, as possible since they fought and they succeed to fight against the, against the colonial, colonialists during the imposition of colonial rule in, in Africa. And this is not during the colonial, during the colonial time. Even the current, current time, you can see that if something is not good, then some people decided to fight against it. They fight against it so that things are, are good. So after che checking the Samoruto resistance, we may have a task which could help us to have the much understanding of about what we have, we have discussed. And here, I would like you, a student, to to have this task, which is that it is a task and our task is briefly So you have to you have to discuss briefly explain the factors which made Samoa to to maintain long resistance against excuse it is a, a typing error against the French by giving six points and this is the end of our Samoa to resistance and from here we may proceed with the other other resistances that is in Zimbabwe so we are now going to check those resistances large scale resistances in Zimbabwe so here in Zimbabwe we meet with Mashona Mashona or Mashona Zaz Matebele, or Shona and Indebele resistances. And in the bracket, or others claimed this as Chimurenga War, or Chimurenga Uprising in Zimbabwe. And, and this resistance was from 1896 to 1897. So these resistances, this resistance, Combined two tribes or societies, Mashona, Azelazi, Debere, or Atebere. So the whites created their settlement in Mashona in 1890. They thought that the Shona might thank the whites and were 
grateful to them since they could protect them against their traditional rivals. So then the bear, but the matter. Thank you.